Hey, hey, welcome to Sketchy EBM. I'm your host, Anthony Crocco, and today we're talking about disclosure. I think this is a really important topic, and you'll soon see why. How many times has this happened to you where you're sitting in an audience and the lecturer is giving some recommendation for some therapy or investigation, and you start to wonder if you can actually trust the person that's giving you this information? I know it's happened to me a few times. I think it's worth spending a minute looking at the evidence that pertains to research and industry sponsorship. Let's first look at randomized control trials. One of the things that I think is always important to look at when reading a randomized control trial is to see whether the authors in any way have been supported by industry. The question then is, can I trust this paper if it's been supported by industry? Well, how would we answer this? As it turns out, there's actually a Cochrane Systematic Review by Lund in 2012 that looked at conclusions from randomized control trials that were industry sponsored versus those that were not. What did the authors find? Well, they found that in randomized control trials that were sponsored by industry, there was significantly more treatment effect. As well, those studies sponsored by industry showed significantly less adverse effects. So what does that mean? Well, if I know that a paper has been supported by industry, I'm not convinced that I can trust it. I know that there's a bias going on here that's pushing in favor of showing safe treatment effect. Well, that's RCTs. How about other types of studies? Well, one of the other common types of studies that we look at are systematic reviews. Although a number of systematic reviews that we see come from the Cochrane database of systematic reviews, some systematic reviews are independent and can be industry sponsored. Well, how do we know if the industry sponsored systematic reviews are as good as the Cochrane database systematic reviews? Well, as it turns out, there was a study in 2007 by Jorgensen in the BMJ where they compared just that. They looked at industry sponsored systematic reviews versus Cochrane database systematic reviews. And what did they find? Well, first they found that the systematic reviews from industry were less transparent and had significant methodologic issues. In addition, they found that the industry sponsored systematic reviews were more likely to have favorable conclusions. So much like we found for randomized controlled trials, systematic reviews that are sponsored by industry are biased in favor of showing treatment effect and not necessarily trustworthy. Well, what does this mean then for our lecturer who's sponsored by industry? I am very cautious when I listen to someone lecturing and making recommendations if I know that they've been sponsored by the industry that actually provides the product they're recommending. Would they really bite the hand that feeds them? On that note, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I want you to know who pays me so that you know whether or not to trust me. Firstly, I'm paid by McMaster University to do teaching. Secondly, I'm paid by the Government of Ontario for the clinical work that I provide. I'm also, when I'm lucky, occasionally paid for teaching gigs, but I have maintained no industry sponsorship. And with that, I'm happy to tell you that I have no conflicts of interest. Thanks a lot for joining me on this episode of Sketchy EBM. Please do take the time to evaluate this episode, and until next time, always remember to draw your own conclusions. <laughs>